Shame, Shame that, that tune. tune! Let's bring up our next contestant. Give a warm Streets and Sanitation District welcome to Nathan Raymond! Story. Get uh, set. Okay. Uh, so when I shame. All right. Uh, when I was nine years old, I knew exactly what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a police officer, uh, and then I wanted to be the vice president of the United States. Why the vice president? I don't know. It seems a little more attainable than being president. <laughs> but then, when I was nine years old, I realized what I really, really, really wanted to be. I went to my first concert. It was the Monkees in Milwaukee. Yeah. And the opening act was a, a gentleman wearing Bermuda shorts. Uh, he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt. He was playing the accordion. And he performed a song called Like a Surgeon. And it was like a virgin, only with funny lyrics. And I thought, holy fucking shit, I want to do that. I can't play an instrument. I know nothing about music. But I can write funny words in place of the actual words to a song. <laughs> so I started a group in the Milwaukee Jewish Day School. And uh, I, um, exactly, I lack the ability to be a musician. Uh, so I started a group called Nathan and the Rockers. Um, <laughs> a stretch to call it a band uh, because it was really just me singing a cappella and this girl that had an, an incredible incredible crush on uh, named Aaron Culbertson ostensibly singing backup I guess I don't know uh, and we had two songs but other than you know being the object of my affection Aaron Culbertson uh, claimed that she had a cousin who worked for MTV and this was 1985, so MTV was exciting. It was kind of the shit. It was where everything happened. Uh, a guy named Michael Jackson was on MTV. <laughs> Did pretty well for him. Uh, so every day after her school, uh, her cousin, who worked for MTV, would call me up and talk about the incredible future that he saw for Nathan and the Rockers. And I got so, so, so unbelievably excited. Uh, and I didn't really think at the time uh, that it seemed weird that this guy, this executive from MTV, uh, seemed to be about 12 or 13 years old. Maybe a couple years old. I was like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm gonna be a rock star at nine, then why shouldn't this MTV executive be only a couple years older than me? Um, and then after some point, he started getting fishier and fishier and fishier, and I realized, like, wait, it's, it's, it's March 23rd. That seems kind of, what, what, if, what if this is just an April Fool's prank? So I, I called up Aaron Culbertson. And I said, I, um, I, you, you, you totally have to tell me if this is an April Fool's prank. Um, because, you know, my entire future is predicated on being an MTV musical superstar. And she said, yeah, that's, that's, that, that's my brother. He doesn't work for MTV. Uh, he is 15 years old. And I fixated on the idea that because this happened before April Fool's Day, because this happened on March 23rd, it didn't count. Uh, you couldn't have an actual prank unless it happened on April Fool's. Um, so I thought like, oh God, fate owes me. They need to pay me back. They need to make me an MTV star because obviously this April Fool's prank didn't work. Uh, it did not really work out that way. But there's kind of an interesting postscript to the story in that uh, 25 years later, uh, Weird Al asked me to write his coffee table book. Um, he contacted me via Twitter, which I guess is still a big thing uh, in the world. Uh, and yeah, that was about three years ago. And as far as I know, that um, is not an April Fool's prank. Uh, and if it is an April Fool's prank, it is the world's most involved and elaborate April Fool's prank because the book came out. <laughs> <laughs> and April f and like five or six different April Fools have passed. So if it is good on you, it's almost more flattering for it to be the world's most elaborate prank than the reverse. So. Also, I shout myself. <laughs> 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 Gotta compete. <laughs> <laughs> Nathan Raymond, everybody.